Hello and welcome. This is Anna Griffiths with the Region 10 Education Service Center. If you have questions on today's Zoom, please contact me at anna.griffiths at region10.org. Today's training is designed as an overview. We will not review each slide, but instead we will share pertinent information on certain slides and summarize other sections so that you are familiar with the TSDS RFT process. The roles and responsibilities that will be needed in the fall when the TSDS RFT opens. The materials referenced in this training and supporting links can be found on the Region 10 Special Education Administrative Support webpage under the Resource tab. The TSDS RFT process is designed to streamline the RF data collection process, decrease, excuse me, duplicative reporting, but it will require district to move, validate, and certify data. The assignment of roles are an LEA decision. However, TEA envisions, envisions a collaboration of PEAMS and special ed RFT personnel assigned to various roles. Those roles include the RFT, LEA, data viewer, promoter, completer, and approver. For additional information, please refer to the April 18, 2019 to the administrator address letter. Residential facilities tracker in the Texas student data system and continue to monitor the TEA special education and residential facilities webpage for updated information. Course objectives. Today's participants will be able to describe the RFT objectives and person, purpose, describe RFT data elements, promote and validate the RFT collection in TSDS, describe the TSDS reports for RFT, complete the RFT collection, and describe the 10 support features. The course agenda is provided here. Please take just a moment to review. Slide three provides a list of frequently used acronyms for your reference. Let's begin with the RFT overview section. The residential facility tracker is designed for LEAs who are serving students with disabilities who reside in a residential facility within the LEA geographic boundaries currently reporting residential facility data through a standalone residential facility monitoring system. Only LEAs that have residential facilities in their geographic boundaries will submit this data. On average, 500 LEAs have submitted this information in the past. Beginning in the 2019-2020 school year, residential facility tracker information will be collected through the Texas Student Data System, TSDS. This change will streamline the data collection process and decrease duplicate reporting. A residential facility for this purpose is defined as a facility that provides 24-hour custody or care of students 22 years of age or younger who reside in the facility for detention, treatment, foster care, or any non-educational purpose. A residential facility is not a traditional foster home licensed by the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The 2019-2020 RFT collection timeline is shown here with upload requirements. Please refer to the TEA Special Education and Residential Facilities webpage for additional information, including recent changes made to the 1819 track. The Residential Facility Tracker Collection dates are as follows. RF Tracker will be ready for users to promote data 
September 9th, 2019. RF Tracker submission due date for LEAs will be July 30th, 2020. And RF Tracker data available to customers will be August 13th, 2020. This is for the 2019-2020 RFT collection timeline. The Special Education Program Area Division at TEA may request that the LEA upload RFT data into TSDS as students come and go at the residential facility or at least monthly. This is the same process that is currently being followed in the legacy system. The LEA will not finalize the collection data in TSDS until all data has been uploaded and the school year ends. The interchanges collected for RFT are listed here for the TSDS PEAM Summer Collection and the TSDS Collection. An interchange refers to the files or groups of data that are sent through the TSDS system. Data elements for the RFT collection. Elements are pieces of information that are reported. RFT PEAM Summer Information. The RFT collection will use data that is already being submitted in the current year PEAM Summer submission, including education organization information, campus information, student basic information for special education students residing at a residential facility and served by the LEA, and special education program information for students. Additional data elements shown here will be reported in the PEAM summer, summer submission. E1629, residential facility indicator on the student extension complex. E1632, effective date, including instructional setting code, primary, secondary, tertiary disability codes, and special education related services. LEAs will submit data pertaining to the residential facility through the TSDS collection. E1627 residential facility ID on the education organization interchange. Residential facility information that is currently in the legacy RFT system will be migrated into ASTED. Beginning in the 2019 2020 year, TEA will have available the residential facility identification form that LEAs will submit via a TIMS ticket when there is a new residential facility in their geographic boundaries or when information for an RF changes. These updates will be made in ASTED by the Special Education Program Area Staff at TEA. This form is attached to the April 18, 2019 TAA letter. Beginning in the 2019-2020, the district name, campus name, and residential facility name will be accessed from ASTED. When a TSDS collection is promoted to the data mark, the district ID, campus ID, and residential facility ID promoted to the data mark will pull the district name, campus name, and residential facility name, respectively, from ASTED. It is vital that LEAs keep the information in ASTED updated and accurate. The residential facility complex type on the student enrollment interchange consists of the data elements listed here. Please take a moment to review the list and note the element number. E1632, which is effective date, will apply to each of the highlighted elements. Again, elements are pieces of information that are reported.
RFT business validations are errors, such as fatals, special warnings, and warnings that you could get after you promote and validate your data. There are examples listed here, and you may also reference the TED Section 5 for all business validations in RFT. We have just reviewed some of the basics of RFT. We are going to continue now with this chart of, which is TEA's chart of the RFT process in TSDS. Please bear with me just a moment um, as I would like us to refer to the Region 10 TSDA, TSDS map. So we just were looking at the TEA's chart of the RFT process in TSDS. In looking at the Region 10 TSDS map, um, this map will also be posted on the Region 10 Administrative Support page for Special Education's program under the Resources tab. The R10 TSDS map provides us with a less complex overview of the data flow and process within the TSDS system. The blue district data box represents the XML files that will be generated from your student information system. The file will then be loaded into the TSDS EDM, or Education Data Mart, represented by the orange box, by the staff with the ODS data loader role. Once the files are processed through the EDM, the data is stored in the ODS, Operational Data Store, which is represented by the blue cylinder. When the staff with the RFT LEA Data Completer role logs into the Core Collection Data Mart represented here by the purple oval, they will select the school, current school year and RFT collection. They will promote the data stored in the ODS bucket into the RFT collection. Once the data has been promoted, they will validate the data to identify any errors. When all fatal errors are rectified, they will review reports and complete the submission. In this example, the RFT LEA data completer role is responsible for processing the entire collection. This is what we at Region 10 typically recommend. However, there are multiple roles that may be involved in this process. So this remains an LEA decision. For more information on this, refer to slide number 16. So let's switch back to the TEA training. So in order to accomplish all of this, certain TSDS roles for RFT are needed. Here are the TEA roles for promoting RFT data that the LEA staff members may request. Please note that at the ESC, we are only able to view your data. the TEAL application process. Directions on how to request the TSDS application are provided for you on slides 18 to 25. If you have difficulty with these, please refer to Sharon's instructions um, through the link that will be provided on the Special Education Leadership webpage. We will also um, post this link distribute this link as um, this goes live. Um, 
As a side note, I had to use Sharon's instructions to request access. You will also need your organization's six digit county district number in either case. So let's advance to slide 26. Responsibilities of the LEA RFT steward. This section starts after data has been loaded from your student information system into TSDS into the ODS, which is the blue cylinder on the map that we just reviewed. When the data has been loaded into the ODS by the ODS data loader, the SPED program area staff will promote. Promote means to move or to upload the data into the core collection data mark. The directions on slides 27 through 48 will walk you through this process. You will begin by logging into TEAL as shown here. Click on the core collection application in the ribbon near the top of the page. Once inside the core collection, the user will select the collection options for the RFT collection, select RFT from the collection drop-down menu, select the school year, and click Go as shown here. RFT action items are provided for you in the main ribbon shown here. The teal rows requested for RFT will determine the options the users will see in the TSDS ribbon. The administration tab will only be available to the superintendent or his or her designee who will have the RFT data approver role. The mission of the Texas Education Agency is to provide leadership, guidance, and resources to help schools meet the educational needs of all students. The TSDS core collection is an effort to consolidate approximately 160 separate data collection systems at TEA. The TSDS core collection improves and standardizes the completion, submission, validation, and reporting processes for many of these data collections. In some cases, the legacy collections require manual data submissions. TSDS automates those laborious and error-prone processes and creates a single unified system for data submission that is consistent and easy to use. Promoting and validating data. Slides 31 through 48 explain the process for promoting or loading and validating data in the RFT core collection. Step-by-step -step instructions along with screenshots are provided. We will not review this, these slides today, but encourage you to review and contact us with any questions. I'm scrolling down to slide 49. This section includes slides 49 through 58, RFT reports. This section contains the various report types that will be available, along with instructions on how to run and what information will be provided in the reports. Please take a moment to review and notice that not all reports have been developed at this time. We will continue to keep you updated and provide you with Region 10 cheat sheets in the fall. Please note that there may be minor changes to what is shown here when it is all finalized. So I'm going to slowly scroll down to slide 59. Slides 59 through 61 are about requesting an extension. 
the superintendent of the LEA or his or her designee can request an extension if there are extenuating circumstances. The request should be submitted prior to completing the data. The administration tab will only be available to the superintendent or designee who will have the RFT data approver role. As shown in this screenshot, the superintendent of the LEA will enter the proposed extension date and extension reason and click Submit. Extension request will be reviewed by TEA and approved or denied on a case-by-case -case situation. An email will be sent to the superintendent stating the outcome of the request and the extended submission due date. The due date is not extended until TEA notifies the superintendent of the extended due date. Slide 62 through 65 explain how to complete the RFT collection. Before you finalize the submission, you will need to make sure that your data has been verified. To ensure that your data is valid, you will address any fatal errors, verify special warnings and warnings, and review reports for completeness and accuracy. On the Prepare Finalize screen, you will see categories and subcategories you have promoted and validated along with error counts. When fail free, click the Complete button, read the acknowledgement, and check the box. Click Confirm. Once confirmed, the RFT submission is marked final and officially submitted to TEA. This next section, slides 66 through 78, provides basic information on the TSDS Incident Management System, referred to as TIMS. The TIMS Level 1 role allows you to submit tickets to TEA when you have issues or questions about the TSDS application. So when you are having problems, you can submit a TIMS ticket. The tickets are escalated or sent to Region 10, and Region 10 escalates or forwards them to TEA. ESCs have a TIMS Level 2 access, and TEA is Level 3. You can also search the knowledge base articles within TIMS for help. Additionally, TIMS is used when you add an RF facility or make changes to existing facilities. Again, the TIMS ticket is escalated to the ESC, who escalates it to TEA, where the information is entered into AS Tech. In order to access TIMS, the RFT data steward will need to apply for the TIMS Level 1 support role in TSDS. Directions on how to apply for this role are also provided in this section. Please refer to slides 66 through 78 for additional information. And with that, let's scroll down to slide 79. Additional resources and wrap-up. RFT additional resources include those that are listed here. And so to wrap it up today, today we talked about the purpose of the residential facility traffic collection, data elements for RFT the TSDS promotion and validation process for RFT, TSDS reports for RFT, the completion process for RFT, and the 10 support features in TSDS. Again, we would like to thank you for your time and for joining us today. We hope this information helps you prepare for the upcoming changes to RFT. 
please remember we will be offering additional training in the fall to assist you with your first promotion. We will also post a recording of this webinar and additional resources that we have mentioned. Again, thank you very much for your time and please do not hesitate to contact us if we can be of further assistance. Thank you very much.